the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, do you have a long-term vision in terms of what you're trying to do with virtual reality and Oculus? So I do, and it's I'm, you know, it's something that people some people read this the wrong way and react incorrectly to it. Where I've said that my pitch for VR is that the 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 promise of VR is it's to make the world as you want it, where people do not have. The, it's just it is not possible on Earth to be able to give everybody all that they would want. Not everybody can have Richard Branson's private island. There's just not enough private, not enough islands in the world to give them to people. But even on a a much more mundane level, not everyone can have a mansion of a house. Not everyone can even necessarily have a home theater room. And these are things that we can simulate to some degree in virtual reality. Now, the simulation's not as good as the real thing. Again, if you are rich and you have your own home theater and mansion and private island, good for you. Uh, we may still be able to offer you the convenience of being able to instantaneously get to different places, but you're still probably not the people that are gonna benefit most from it. I. Uh, but most of the people in the world aren't in that position. Most of the people in the world live in relatively clamped quarters that are not what they would choose to be if they had unlimited resources. And the technology curves for these things are, this is $400 now. We have uh, an earlier one that's $200 that's less capable, but these follow the cell phone price curves in many ways. We have $25 cell phones in India now that are smartphones that do a lot of these things. The technology curve, Moore's Law may be crapping out in terms of absolute performance, but we've still got a lot of price performance that we can drive out of these things. And we can have virtual reality devices that can get cheap enough that lots and lots of people will be able to have these and we can make better and better software and it can be a better world in many ways. Now people, everybody points towards, like there's this uh, art piece of art that goes around the internet of this sort of dystopian kid in the corner drew, you know, drooling with glass goggles on with rainbow pictures on them and it's a terrible looking place. And people say, it's like, oh, this is the world you're trying to build. People plugged into virtual reality that ignore the world around them. And of course, the first rejoinder to that is, well, is his life really better if he takes them off and he's in this horrible place there? But more concretely, like I just came from in Dallas, it's 100 degrees this week uh, there. We change the world around us in all that we do. We live in air conditioning and people nowadays don't generally go, oh, you're not experiencing the world around you because of your air conditioning. You should be out there really experiencing the world. Now, that is what human beings do is we, you know, we bend the world to our will. And I think that a virtual reality that lets people do things that would not be possible in the world, or it comes down to it, not economical. And a lot of people react negatively to any talk about economics, but it is resource allocation. I'm, you know, you have to make decisions about where things go. And I think that economically, we can deliver more value to a lot of people in this virtual sense. We're at the very earliest stage of it right now with the experiences that we have and the things you can do and how long you want to keep it on. But there is a path to this comfortable thing that you can wear for hours at a time. Maybe you spend your entire workday working in it. Maybe your time after coming home is putting it on. And I mean, right now you can... You can watch TV with someone else in virtual reality, which is this mundane thing, but you can have I, you know, your sister or somebody that's across the country and you can have meet in a virtual space, look over and see each other and, you know, watch something on TV. Like all activities that do not require an actual tactile physical thing can eventually be subsumed in this where there are a lot of things that do require the tactile stuff. You're not going to be replacing food with virtual reality anytime soon, but a surprising amount of things that people value are these largely audiovisual things. It's the decoration, the museum that you walk through, you're not fondling the individual things there. You're experiencing things in a way that could, with a good enough virtual reality experience, be replicated there without the travel, without the lines, without the crowds. You could have it private to yourself. And there's so many things like this. It's not everything. It's two of your senses simulated fairly well. But we can do an enormous amount with this. And I always, like internally, I'm almost a broken record in the company. Most people are tired of hearing me harp about this, but it's all about user value. You know, what I care about building things as an engineer, the whole point is to bring value to the world. And I think that virtual reality can bring a lot of value. We're 
not there yet. We're in very early days of there are certain niches of people today that can get a great value out of this. I don't pretend that this is something that, you know, everyone in the world can benefit from today, but we're inching our way up towards that. And that's how, you know, that's how the world gets better is by building technologies and distributing to them people so that they have something better than they would have had if that didn't exist. 